everyone, this video is on the intensity of sound and the inverse square law. Intensity of sound is related to the amplitude of sound waves. Specifically, intensity is directly proportional to the square of the sound wave's amplitude. This means if we double the amplitude of a sound wave, this would result in the intensity of sound to increase by four times. The alternative definition of intensity is the power of the wave per unit area. It is calculated by dividing the power, P, by the area over which the wave of sound is incident on. Now recall that power is given by the rate of energy transfer over time. So it is also defined as how many joules of energy associated with the wave is transferred from one location to another every second. This means we can redefine the intensity of sound as also the energy of wave transferred per second per unit area. So intensity equals the energy divided by area times by time. The unit of intensity can either be expressed in joules per second per meter squared or simply as watts per meter squared as joules per second and watts are equivalent units. By considering the following three equations, it's important to link the ideas between the amplitude of a sound wave to its power as well as energy over time. So when a sound wave has a higher amplitude, it will have a greater power and it is able to transform more energy in joules every second. Now in the video on the introduction to sound waves, we also emphasize that the amplitude of a sound wave is related to the volume or the loudness of a sound wave. So this also means volume of the sound wave is also related to the intensity of sound. When a sound wave has a greater intensity, it is louder and has a greater volume. Vice versa, when a sound wave has a lower intensity, it has a smaller volume and is quieter. When we talk about the volume of sound, we often hear the word decibels. Now, it is important to know that the quietest sound that can be detected by the average human ear is a rather small number. It's 10 to the power of minus 12 watts per meter squared. Remember, this is one of the units for the intensity of sound. Sound waves can have a big range in terms of in its intensity. It can be much, much smaller than this, and it can be much, much greater in intensity compared to the quietest sound that can be detected. Decibels is a unit of sound intensity that is expressed on the logarithmic scale. Specifically, it's equal to 10 times by log to the base of 10, the intensity of sound that we are measuring, divided by I0, which is the lowest intensity of sound that can be heard by the human ear. And by doing this calculation, we can convert the intensity into a number in decibels. For example, if we have a sound that has an intensity of 1 times by 10 to the power of minus 5 watts per meter squared, we can put this into the equation to find the intensity in decibels. So this will be 10 times by log to the base of 10, 1 times by 10 to minus 5 divided by the reference intensity, which is the smallest intensity that can be heard by the human ear, and this will give a decibel of 70. Now, because decibel is expressed on the logarithmic scale, when we have an intensity of 80 decibels, this means that the intensity is actually 10 times greater than 70 decibels. Similarly, when we have an intensity of 90 decibels, this is another 10 times greater than 80 decibels, which would be 100 times louder than 70 decibels. So decibels is not a linear scale. It is a logarithmic scale. A difference of 10 in intensity when expressed in decibels is equivalent to a 10 times change in the actual volume or intensity of sound. As the sound wave propagates from its source, its intensity decreases with the distance. Specifically, the intensity is inversely proportional to the wave's distance from the source. This relationship is commonly regarded as the inverse square law. We can express this relationship in two ways. We can, we can write intensity is equal to a constant k divided by r squared, where r is the distance, the current point that you're measuring the intensity at from the source which produces sound wave. For a given sound source, 
regardless of where you're measuring the intensity at, the constant K is a constant. It does not change. So we can use that and write the second equation where I1 times by R1 squared, so that is the intensity at point 1, times by the distance at point 1 from the source of sound squared, this will be equal to the intensity of the same sound source measured at a second point multiplied by R2 squared, which is the distance of the second point from the source of sound. For example, if we take this point here as point number one, then the intensity of sound we're measuring at point one will be I1, and the distance of this point from the loudspeaker which produces the sound will be also R1. If we take the distance as 2R away from the loudspeaker as 0.2, then intensity at this point will be I2, and the distance at this point will be regarded as R2. Another point I want to emphasize is that since intensity is related to the concept of power, even though the intensity of sound decreases as the distance increases, the actual power or the rate at which energy of the sound wave is transferred is actually kept equal or constant at each of the distances. Intensity of sound is equal to the power divided by the area. As the sound wave propagates away from the source, the area over which the sound wave is incident on, as you can see in the diagram, increases with the distance. So in this equation, the value of area in the denominator increases with distance r. As a result, the intensity of sound will decrease as the two are inversely proportional. While this is happening, the power of the actual sound wave is kept constant because we're keeping the sound source the same. We are producing the same amount of energy in the form of sound wave every second. The intensity decreases because the same amount of energy is distributed over a greater area. Let's go through an example. The intensity of sound detected at a distance of 6 meters from the loudspeaker is 72 joules per second per meter squared. So let's call this intensity 1, I1, and the 6 meters will be R1. What is the intensity of the same sound wave measured by a person standing 10 meters away from the loudspeaker? Let's call this R2. Because we are analyzing the same sound wave, that is, we're assuming this, the source of sound is unchanged we can say that I1 R1 squared is equal to I2 R2 squared. I1 will be 72, R1 will be 6 squared, this is equal to I2 times by 10 squared. So I2 equals 25.92 joules per second per meter squared. As we expected, because the distance is now further away from the sound source, we will expect the intensity to be lower than what we measured at 6 meters. This concludes the video on the intensity of sound waves. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.